Over the last decade, there have been some really extraordinary histories written uh, by academics and I guess more popular historians that are really changing how people see history, world history, and all the cultures of the world, all the empires of the world. And what I try to do on this channel is bring some of those to the general reader. Now, I'm no professional historian. I'm no academic historian. For 33 years, I worked as a government official. But what I'm trying to do is help bring some of those new understandings of the past, not just of all the traditional stories of America and England and the Roman Empire, but all the stories of the world, all the stories of the long, long, long multipolar world, to intelligent viewers on YouTube who are curious about history, curious about geopolitics, and curious about uh, how our world is changing. And some of those books I've really recommended to people. And that is one of the books that I'm recommending to you today. It is really one of those new history books that really change your mind about uh, history, that change your sense of what the patterns and scope of history and change your understanding of global history, the history of all the world, of all the empires. And that book is a very recent book published in sort of late 2021 and it's the book by Marie Favreau, The Horde. How the Mongols Changed the World, and this book, uh, which tells the history of how the Mongol Empire, the Horde, particularly the gold, or often known as the Golden Horde, based in the area around southern Russia, Crimea, um, you know, the Caucasus, that sort of area, uh, going into Ukraine, what is now known as Ukraine, uh, really change the world and this is different to our common understanding so i want to give you five reasons to read this remarkable book because not only did the mongols change the world but reading the horde will change how you see the history and geopolitics of the world Number one reason, it is a brilliant, empathetic account of who uh, really were the Mongols, who really were the Horde. Everyone's heard of Genghis Khan or Chinggis Khan. You know, that terrifying Mongol warrior swooping down and destroying cities, killing thousands, millions even of people and fathering uh, many, many children. But the Horde, the Mongols, were a much more complex, uh, dynamic, rich society than and culture than that would suggest. And Marie Favreau really gives us a much more uh, fascinating understanding of how the Horde saw themselves. And the Horde is the term that Marie Favreau uh, discovers or argues is closest to how uh, these people describe themselves, uh, even if it now perhaps, except if you're a World of Warcraft player, has a negative association. So uh, it's a brilliant a way of having a better, empathetic, compassionate understanding of this extraordinary uh, empire that had such a decisive influence in world history. The second key reason is you will totally change your understanding of how it did have such a decisive influence in world history. I guess lots of people might know that the Mongol Empire was, you know, the largest continuous land 
land empire ever ever assembled all the way from China through to uh, to Eastern Europe did you really know that the uh, Mongol Empire had a decisive impact on changing world history not just through killing people or raiding territories or um, demanding tribute from other societies but by its positive influence on so many parts of the world and if you read Marie Favreau's brilliant book The Horde you will get an understanding of that the, the third reason to read this great book is that uh, it will give you a sense of the humanity, the key individuals, the rulers, the, the personalities, the diversity of the empire of the Horde. You'll be able to name more than one decisive Mongol or Horde ruler who changed the course of world history. You'll get beyond just referring to uh, Genghis Khan or Genghis Khan because it's not just like a dry story about politics and all that sort of stuff, you know, exchange routes and military campaigns. It's a vivid human story. I'm not going to go into all the detail, but there will be some extraordinary characters you'll meet in this book, including Batu and Uzbek Khan. Uzbek, who I assume Uzbekistan is named after, and Uzbek Khan, who will emerge through the narrative as perhaps one of the most decisive and important rulers of the Horde, one who really, I guess, held the 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 harnesses, the, the riding crops of the world, who sat across the trading routes of east, west, north, south, and had an utterly decisive impact on the development and the politics of Eurasia, and also especially Russia. And that is the fourth big reason that you'll want to read this book, and that in a way makes it very relevant, not just to curiosity about history, but to perceptions of current day events. Of course, all the world is debating the role of Russia in geopolitics and history, uh, whether it's part of Europe, whether it's an aggressive part of, uh, so it, whether it it is the spiritual successor to Genghis Khan's murderous horde. But if you read this book by Marie Favreau, The Horde, you will totally, I think, change your understanding of how intimately linked the history of Russia and more broadly of Eurasia, and uh, of the Mongol Empire, the Horde was. And Uzbek Khan in particular had a crucial, dynamic and positive influence on the development of Muscovy. And I've done a whole podcast that looks at the sort of relationship between the Mongol inheritance and Russian history, uh, which you can check out. So it will change your sense of uh, you, uh, Eurasian history, of Russian history, and uh, you will fill in a blank. Uh, this The Mongol Empire is this sort of... Uh, vast expanse that no one really knows terribly much about its internal dynamics its internal de development and it's it what it gave to the world what it gave to the world beyond armies and terror and combat and so you will fill in your understanding of 
the vast centre of the world island. So, and that's the fifth great reason to read Marie Favreau's book, because she has this idea that uh, the Mongols are not just this uh, embarrassing, violent empire from the late Middle Ages that almost destroyed Europe, that devastated Central Asia and devastated some of the Islamic uh, caliphates. But it had a vital, pivotal and constructive role in world history. And in fact, she refers, uh, she uses the term the Mongol exchange, which is a reference to, uh, I guess, the idea of the Columbian exchange when uh, reference to Christopher Columbus and after Christopher Columbus and Europe moved to the Americas, uh, the New World, there was this extraordinary exchange of plants and animals and uh, ideas and peoples which had a decisive influence on world history, and that is the Columbian Exchange. And in many ways, Marie Favreau argues that the Mongols had a similar huge cultural uh, impact on the world, social, political and cultural impact on the world through the worlds they uh, held together, not just by their armies, but by their systems of government, their support for trade routes, their methods of law, their methods of government, their adaptability. And uh, and this was an extraordinary surprise for me. Their, uh, I guess their extraordinary sensitivity to cultural diversity and their adapt, uh, you know, adaptability to different cultures, their ability to find clever ways to uh, rule without the control of territory. They were masters, not just in the art of warfare, but in the art of government. And that will completely flip your mind about the nature of the Mongol in all hordes' uh, contribution to world history and perhaps also change your sense of what really matters in geopolitics. What really matters today is perhaps some more uh, sensitivity, adaptability to the diversity of cultures, forms of government, and the many peoples of the world. And this, of course, included... Uh, adapting to and incorporating aspects of Islamic rule, Islamic life, Islamic religion, and Mongol, uh, Buddhist, and other uh, sort of shamanistic practices. They, the Mongols, actually adopt through its singular adaptiveness and assimilative capacities. The horde changed the world. The Horde shaped the politics of Russia and of Central Asia and firmly anchored Islam in the Caucasus and Eastern Europe. The Horde brought steppe peoples to Mameluk, Egypt, and Franciscans to Crimea and the lower Volga, the Volga River. The Mongol exchange, of which the Dochids were the key agents, that's the key uh, sort of golden em horde sort of empire that she looks at, knit together east and west. And all of this was achieved through processes of evolution that made the horde at once unique and recognisably Mongol. There was as much a Jochid way of empire as there was a Roman way, an Ottoman way, and a British way, I suppose, 
an American way. When we think about the legacy of empires, we of course recognize the cosmopolitan effects of the Mediterranean, European and Ottoman empires that made the world smaller through practices of tolerance, coercion, exploitation, uh, protection, investment and conquest. These empires are credited with driving global history, but nomads, and the Mongols were, the Horde were a Mongol empire. Uh, think the Dothraki in the Game of Thrones. The, but nomads drove global history too, and none more so than the people of the Horde. It's a great book, highly recommended. There's a link to where you can buy uh, uh, Marie Favreau's book, The Horde, How the Mongols Changed the World, in the video description below. And I've also done a podcast adapted to YouTube on that looks in more detail about this whole idea of the Mongol exchange and uh, its impact on Russian history. So, not just Russian history, but particularly Russian history. And you can see the link to that uh, here. And I hope to see you in the next video.